<clears throat> okay, so this morning I was out in the barn, which has been turned into a timber framing shop for now. I got the two sill plates laid out, and I'm ready to cut some mortises. This little baby arrived a couple of weeks ago, and actually with a level of restraint that I am not known for, I have managed to not open it until now. So let's do an unboxing video for the Makita 7104L chain mortiser, which I will be using to cut the mortises in the timber frame shed that I am currently building. It looks like this box has been cut open before. So, boom. A box in a box. Boom. What do we got here? Cardboard. Paper. More paper. This comes in handy as sauna fire starters. Bubble wrap comes in handy for amusing my five year old sensibilities. More paper. No more paper. Fair to say it was well packed. Inflatables. Ah, a 13 and 17 millimeter wrench, oil for the chain bar, cardboard, more paper, instructions, oh, and it's heavy. Ah, put it on the floor. go. This looks like what I remember. There are depth stops here. This locking bar to clamp it on the beam. This adjusts the position side to side of the mortiser once it's clamped on the beam. And then this, as I recall, moves it a full width, chain width, so you set it, you can move it one chain width with that. And of course it's, as I do with a utility knife, All right, plan B, wire cutters. Boom. This allows you to plunge. As I recall, this allows you to set yeah, several positions so you can easier to do when it's clamped down. This is for adjusting the fence to the width of the beam. Pretty straightforward. Let's see if it works. I'm not patient enough to Unwrap that wire when I have wire cutters right there. So it's got a nice long cord on it, which will be handy in the shop. Boom. Electricity flowing to the device. Piece of cake, sharp blade. This opens so you can apply oil to the chain, which I guess probably got oil on it, but I will do. This needs to be cut. Yeah, bubble wrap. Open the oil. Oh, it's a little cap. Would have been useful to know. Boom. Um, 
Do the oil on the chain. <laughs> Boom. Let's go to the barn and cut our first mortise. Yay. So before cutting the mortise itself, I have them marked. I will use this marking template and score the lines with a knife so we get a nice clean cut. One and a half inches, three inches, and then this way we've got two inches. Five and a half. And particularly on the uphill side of the mortise, where the chain is cutting upward and you'll tend to get splintering, not a bad idea to stick your chisel in that knife line we just scored. Take out a little sliver of wood. Prevent splitting. There. So I've moved the beam down onto the lower sawhorses, which will make it a little easier to work with. At North House, when we used these things, North House Folk School, that is, they had little boxes you could stand on when working on the high. And I want to go this way. Okay, so adjust this, set the clamp to just a little bit wider than the beam, clamp it down, nice and solid, and then there's this little crank that you can find your line, and actually this, you go this way, so actually what I want to do is start on the Leftmost edge of my mortise. I'm just kind of sighting down the teeth to see where it's going to bite. It's looking not too bad. Oh, depth of cut. I want to go four and a half inches deep here. Now, I'm old and blind. These markings are hellishly hard to read and hard to figure out. Zero. That would be zero depth of cut. Three, six, nine, twelve. Hard to understand what the heck that means. So I think what I'm going to do is I've dropped the mortiser down so it's touching the beam. So I don't remember noticing this on the mortisers that I was using at the North House Folk School, but this one actually has a nice convenient zero mark, which I presume you just line up on that right edge of the mortise, well, left in this shot. All right, let's try it. Cut our first mortiser with my own mortising machine. Be a little tighter this way. Other way.
that has made quick work of that. And it's a simple matter of using a chisel to clean things up. Actually, that has gone really well. After we get the mortise cleaned out with the chisel, we use the framing square to check for depth and square. Looks good. And just the one and a half inch arm of the framing square to check the width of the mortise. Pretty good. Put it tight right there. Should do it.